Good evening, everyone. As Dale Olson pointed out, I made it a week without saying good morning in the evening. So finally, uh, we welcome you here tonight as we are in the season of Advent and the church reflects that. We will be lighting the Advent wreath in just a few moments as we draw nearer to the celebration of our Lord's birth, his, his first coming, his first Advent, uh, which changed, changed everything. Um, that God would dwell in the flesh and dwell among us and be our Emmanuel. And we gather around that tonight. So uh, as the celebration of Christ's first advent draws closer, so does his return, right? We're one day closer than we were yesterday. As we approach both of these days, we do so with patience and with confidence, knowing that God keeps his promises and provides us comfort and salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's something that will be a theme for the night comfort. And we will begin by singing a song, a hymn about comfort. Comfort, comfort ye my people. Uh, hymn number 347. Say 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, as we light the Advent wreath, we remember that God has kept His promise to send a messenger ahead of the Christ to proclaim that God's salvation had come. The prophet foretold of John the Baptist's message, followed by the arrival of God Himself, who would shepherd and comfort God's people. Isaiah writes, A voice voice cries, cries, In the the wilderness, wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. This time we do light two candles on the Advent wreath. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, we light the second candle of this wreath in preparation for your coming. Grant us faith that we might believe and take to heart John the Baptist's message and God's promises made manifest in you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But But if we confess confess our sins, sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most Most merciful merciful God, God, We We confess confess that we are, by nature, nature, sinful and and unclean. We We have have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by by what what we have done and by what we have have left undone. undone. We We have have not loved you with our our whole heart. heart. We have have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine forth that we might be saved. Give Give ear, O shepherd shepherd of Israel, Israel. you You who lead Joseph Joseph like a flock, you You who are are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. You brought a vine out of Egypt. It took deep root and filled the land. Restore Restore us, us, O God. God. Let your face shine forth, that we might be saved. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine forth, that we might be saved. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Help. 
save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready that way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. To the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, and now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our readings for today. Our Old Testament reading for this, the second Sunday of Advent, comes from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those who are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please join me in saying the gradual. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. Our epistle reading for today comes from Peter's second letter to the churches, the third chapter. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. And the earth and the works that are done in it will be exposed. Because all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, because you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. I invite you to stand as we say our Alleluia and verse before the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have have the words words of of eternal eternal life. life. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Lord. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The The voice of one crying in the wilderness, 
Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn for today. That's hymn of the day. On Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry. Note, we'll only be singing three verses of that hymn. Verse, verses 1, 3, and 5. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In 1942, the cartoon Super Mouse was born. This character originated from an idea by animator Isidore Klein at the Terry Terry Toon Studio, who suggested a parody of the popular Superman character. However... His idea wasn't for a super mouse. He submitted some sketches of a superhero fly. Paul Terry, the head of the studio, liked the idea of a Superman parody, but suggested a mouse rather than an insect. Now, if you don't remember super mouse, don't feel bad. I didn't remember super mouse either. But that's because he was only around for two years. Because in 1944, Super Mouse got a name change and became Mighty Mouse. Remember Mighty Mouse? Mighty Mouse will save the day, right? Mighty Mouse superpowers are vast and sometimes even appeared limitless. His main powers included flight, super strength, and invulnerability. The early cartoons often portrayed him as ruthless, a good fighter, and one of his most frequent tactics was to fly underneath the chin of his adversary and deliver blow after blow after blow, beating his opponent into submission. In an interview in 1969, Paul Terry said that Mighty Mouse's power had a religious aspect. 
This is his quote. When a man is sick or down or hurt, you say, there's nothing more we can do. It's in God's hand. And he either survives or he doesn't according to God's plan. So taking that as a basis, Paul Terry continues, I'd only have to get the mice in a tough spot and then say, isn't there someone who can help? Yes, there is someone. It's Mighty Mouse. So down from the heavens he'd come sailing down and lick that evil spirit or whatever it was. And everything would be serene again. Biographer W. Gerald Harmonic notes that as of the mid-40s, Mighty Mouse would be pictured living on a star up in the heavens or a cloud, and that he became a Christ-like figure, a savior of all mouse kind. In our gospel reading for today, John the Baptist proclaimed about the one who was to come. Mark recorded these words in verse 7, and he preached, that is he, John, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. Here John the Baptist doesn't preach about a Christ-like figure. He preaches about the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior of all mankind who was to come. During this Advent season, here we are taking a look at some of the different times during the church year that we look forward to Jesus coming. Last week, Pastor Chris took us through Jesus coming to Jerusalem as he made his triumphal entry into the holy city. And this week we look at John the Baptist's introduction to Jesus coming on the scene before he began his ministry. And we hear these words of John the Baptist again, describing how he compares in comparison, how he pales in comparison to the one who is to come. After me comes he who is mightier than I, whose sandals I am unworthy to untie. But before that, in verse 7, Mark starts his gospel with an Old Testament prophecy concerning John the Baptist. He puts a little context to it. The words Mark quotes are taken from Malachi 3, verse 1, and from Isaiah 40, verse 3, which Pastor Chris read just a few moments ago. In the last half of verse 2 from our gospel reading, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. These Old Testament prophecies make it clear that it was God who sent John the Baptist as his messenger to announce the coming of his son so that the hearts of the people would be prepared for his coming. Mark shows us how John fulfilled these words of prophecy. When John the Baptist came, those who saw and heard him could only come to one conclusion. And that was after John would come the promised Messiah. By comparing prophecy and fulfillment, we have found no doubt that he who followed John the Baptist was indeed the promised Messiah. John was God's messenger, God's vocal instrument. He did not proclaim his own wisdom, but wisdom from God. For John recognized his own shortcomings with those familiar words, after me comes he who is mightier than I. John confesses, I'm not the main event. I'm not the one you came to see. Or as they used to say 10 years ago, I'm not all that in a bag of chips. No. John isn't the one that the people should be looking for. We too need to be reminded that we aren't the ones people should be looking for. 
Our sinful nature, including our pride and arrogance, wants the world to take a step back and say, wow, look at that. Did you see what he or she can do? That's amazing. We want our claim to fame to come from our friends and family here in North Dakota, or even for it to go viral on social media and gain that attention. But with these words, John reminds us that we aren't the one who is truly amazing. There is one who will come again who is mightier than I. He is the one who is to come to judge both the living and the dead. Jesus the Messiah is the one who is truly amazing because he is the Almighty who is mightier than I. John isn't the one who is almighty, and he recognizes that. However, John is a sight to be seen. He wore rough clothing, woven of camel's hair, and his diet was made of what he could find in the desert, wild honey and locusts. To the people, John was another Elijah, whom in the 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 8 is described as a man with a garment of hair and with a leather belt around his waist. When John began his work in that desert region, this uninhabited area near the Jordan River, that similarity between John and Elijah could not be overlooked by the people. That 20-mile journey for them was a difficult one, coming down the hill from Jerusalem, and then when they returned to go back up that same hill. But they came because they sensed the power of God in what John was saying. They were excited. After all, it had been 400 years since they had seen a legitimate prophet appear on the scene and proclaim God's promises. So they went to find out. And find out they did. In verse 4, John appeared baptizing in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Why? Because the hearts of the people had become just like that desert region. And they needed to be rescued. What he offered them in this baptism of repentance was not merely a ritual washing, but the gift of forgiveness. The forgiveness granted by John's baptism was not a reward because they had repented, but a wonderful gift of God who through John's preaching of the word brought them to repentance and a change of heart. We too need to be reminded to repent. We too must admit that we sin each day against God and need to amend that sinful life. It's why we have confession and absolution built into every worship service. It is that important. We confess our sin, and when we do it, it is an amazing and wonderful gift to receive that forgiveness of sins. The pastor says, just as Pastor Chris did a few moments ago, as a called and ordained servant of the word, and a servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Don't misunderstand me. It's not that we as pastors are any better. We too need to repent of our sins and receive that forgiveness as well. We are just the messengers. And even though John preached repentance, he humbled himself with these words, after he, after me comes he who is mightier than I. The strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. And to further illustrate that point, John compares the baptism he offers as nothing compared to the one that's coming that the Messiah will bring forth. Verse 8 of our reading today. I have baptized you with water, but He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
Now that may bring to mind those words of Jesus before He ascended into heaven. Jesus explained these words of John as Luke recorded them in Acts chapter 1, verse 5. Jesus said, For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Those words of John referred to the day of Pentecost when the church was indeed to experience that power of the Holy Spirit. In the months before, the people had turned away from Christ. They sent Him to the cross. But on Pentecost, after Peter proclaimed Christ, we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, that those who received His word were baptized, and there were 3,000 souls added that day. In your baptism, you received a wonderful gift of God. What gift or benefit is this baptism? Well, in our Luther's small catechism, we read, it works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. And where are those words and promises of God? Right in this same Gospel of Mark. Chapter 16, verse 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And whoever does not believe will be condemned. But all of this depended on something else. Something else had to happen first. And that is our Lord's work of redemption. He who is mightier than I was able to take your sin and mine with him up on that cross. He who is mightier than I suffered terribly, paying the ransom that God rightly required for our sin. The ransom he who is mightier than I paid so dearly with his very own life. And upon Jesus' death, Mark recorded these words of the centurion who witnessed all that happened the moment that Jesus died. In chapter 15, verse 39, the centurion said, Truly this man was the Son of God. To me, those words bring to mind how Mark opened his gospel here in verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God of God. And because he who is mightier than I is the almighty son of God, he rose from the dead, conquering death and the grave. For no tomb could hold him, he who is mightier than I. It is only because of our Lord's work of redemption, John's baptism brought that forgiveness of sins. And it is because of our Lord's work of redemption, God deals with us today in the same way in His Word and sacrament now. Without the Messiah, this could never have been accomplished because of what Christ did for us on the cross. Tonight, those of you who are present will participate in that sacrament. And we do that to receive that forgiveness of sins once more for the strengthening of our faith. That's why John was sent. To prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. He who is mightier than I, and who is far mightier than that mighty mouse, or any other superhero, didn't use his divine power to physically beat up evil spirits or evil foes, but used it to rise from the dead to new life. John's message of the Messiah's coming assures us that Jesus is the Son of God, your Savior. And by his sacrifice for you, we who believe in him inherit eternal life. He who is mightier than I has done it. To God alone be all the glory. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. At this time we invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess, I believe, I believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. And he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For unashamed hope in the Lord's return, that sustained by his Holy Spirit, we may have joy at the advent of Christ our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the church, as she enters another church year, that God would enrich his saints in every way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For Matthew, our synodical president, Ari, our district president, Leo, our circuit visitor, and for all pastors in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all Christians that called into the fellowship of God's Son, we would be sustained in our hope as we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For husbands and wives, that they would live in love and service to one another, for fathers and mothers, that they would bring up their children in the fear and instruction of the Lord, and for all those who are single and desire to be married, that the Lord would provide godly companionship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For worthy reception of Christ's body and blood, that as he once was received humbly in Jerusalem to cries of Hosanna, we may receive him according to his promises for the forgiveness of our sins, and in the unity of a true confession, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those in distress of mind, body, and soul, especially those who have requested our prayers, including Kevin Meyer, Sue Booth, Diane Lee, Craig and Sue Kepi, Don McCabe, Lynn Ring, Monterey Morse, Heather Mum, Betty Gerald, Jean Enright, Stacy Lorth, Claudia Schrader, Tracy Tripke, and, and also for Irene, James, and Ruth, for Daryl, Tim, and JP, for Brody, Lynn, Adam, Mary, Kurt, and Vic, for John, Marilyn, Scott, and Dennis, Dee, Diane, Irene, Gwen, Shirley, and Paul, John, Mary, and Carmine, for Annie and Harold, Lloyd and Skip, and Deanna, Julie, Peg, Oliver, Maverick, and Tom, for Renee, Mike, pra Mike Pam, Braden, Cameron, and Amy, and for, pa, uh, for Pam, John, Donnie, Denise, Pam, and Rhonda, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who mourn, including Wanda Raisler and her family at the loss of her cousin Tim. For Mitch Kalis and his family at the loss of his mother. For Mark Osmond and his family at the loss of his sister Shelley. That they may know the consolation of the resurrection of the dead through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue our service by singing our offertory, Gracious God, you send great blessings.
continue with the celebration of the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We We lift lift them them unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to to give him him thanks thanks and praise. praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and with archangels, and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of Christ's body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feasts of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. We now sing the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God.
Please stand for the post-communion canticle. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Sorry about that. Offering envelopes, please pick those up in the narthex if you haven't done so already. Pastor Brian, are you back there? I don't know if you've seen these calendars that the youth are selling. Do you still have calendars? I do. Uh, they are beautiful. They always are breathtaking, and all of those calendars help our youth. And they're 10, 10 bucks a piece, so if you haven't bought one yet and you need a calendar, please do that. Uh, donate to the sock and mitten tree that's out there. There are devotionals for family use. Uh, that's a very important piece of faith, uh, having devotions with the family at home. Free to you from Lutheran Hour Ministries that are out in the narthex. Please pick one of those up. Uh, our congregational memory verse challenge for this week, for December 6th, comes from the book of Isaiah, the 30th chapter. For thus said the Lord God... The Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and in trust shall be your strength. That is Isaiah 30, 15. That's a shorter one, so I think that'll be a good one for us to do. We can do that. Um, still needing confirmation sponsors and Sunday school volunteers, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, sign up to attend our holiday, our holiday worship services, our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services. Those are filling, and it looks like we might have to add more services, which we will more than likely do. We'll see where we end up, but uh, uh, sign up for that if you haven't done it yet. Uh, there's a, there is something about singing reduced in services that in the newsletter. If you'd like to know more about that, why we're doing it, that's in the newsletter, so please look there, and also about the mask mandate. That's in there as well. Churches were exempt from the mayor's mask mandate initially, but then a revised executive order, amended executive order, uh, discontinued that, and then we fell underneath the mask mandate. So if you'd like more information about that, please see the newsletter. Are there any other announcements, Pastor, that I've neglected to mention or failed to give to the people? Anything, anything? No? 
Then, as is our tradition, we will be dismissed. Mike will dismiss us. Uh, but we wish you a very happy Advent season and Christmas seasons uh, in the name of our coming Lord Jesus, uh, who is our comfort. Have a blessed week in his name.